welcome to the 100 Indie Artists Project. This is a music project designed for and by independent artists to help you firstly get to know some of the incredible musicians in your community, as well as get to know some insights and some tools that you can take on board with your own musical marketing journey. Tell us about who you are as an artist and your background. Hey, I'm Nico. I play Sifty Seaside Indie Rock. Uh, it's been described as uh, melancholy twang with a robust essence of hopefulness, which I, I like that because I guess it's quite a, can be dark, deep music, but it's quite hopeful. Um, it's got a bit, yeah, it's good road trip music, barbecue music, but with a bit of a deeper <laughs> edge, darker edge, I guess. Um, a bit about my background, I guess I've been playing bands, various bands for, for a lot of years. And, um, you know, one of my earlier bands kind of, we went our separate ways. I started to um, sing just mainly because I was writing a lot and just wanted to still play my own songs. So I started doing the solo thing, the Nico solo thing started, you know, a long time ago. And it was something that I ran alongside bands that I was in, but now that's my sole focus is the solo project. Um, and then I just get other musicians in for the, for the uh, performance live side of it, I guess. Um, but yeah, at very varying degrees, I guess, of success with, with bands from touring around Australia and, and a bit overseas, a bit of airplay and um, festivals and things like that. But um, yeah, I've always played live and, kind of booked my own shows and, and um, done the indie thing, I guess, as much as um, mostly. Um, but kind of where I'm at now is more building a team around me to help me take it to the next level, I guess. So, What musical projects are you working on right now? Yeah, my current focus is the Nico solo project. Where do you feel that you're at in your musical journey right now and where would you like to get to? So, yeah, where it's at now, it's really... It's, Kind of building that, as I mentioned, building that team. Um, so I've always kind of done it myself, and I think that's good and extent to to learn all all the parts. But <laughs> comes a point where you know you need to delegate things and, and work out what you're good at and what, when you need other people's help. So yeah, I've, I've actually got a, a working with a manager, and um, yeah, and, and that's kind of just just try to build it, take it to the next level. Our, I've got a new release coming out um, next this month. First single from, from a new body of work, which will be an EP later in the year. First single out end of May um, off that body of work. And so our focus is kind of going to be, I guess, um, you know, just getting more fans, really followers, getting the streams up. And I'd really like to be playing more festivals again something I've done in the past with bands have been, but get the Nico project to a point where I can be playing festivals. I really like that vibe. I think it's, I like the diversity in the crowds. And I think my music sits well in, in, in some of those festivals. So what do you love most about being an independent artist? So I just, I like being in control of my, um, yeah, my destiny, you know, like I said, I think it's important to build a team around you and delegate some tasks, but I also like being kind of in control. Um, what do you find the most challenging about being an independent artist? And then what's challenging about that is probably there's a lot of things to do. <laughs> and, um, yeah, having time to do all those, those things, you know. Um, I've, I've got a day job, I've got a business that I run, family. Um, so that can be challenging, but that's where I think having a team to bounce off is really important as well because they not only kind of can motivate you and keep you accountable, but, yeah, it's just having other, other ears and other ideas. Um, that's really, really valuable. Uh, so that's kind of where I'm at. What has been your experience in marketing and promoting your music? I mean, I've had varying <laughs> success. I've never really been that great at marketing my, my own music, which is another reason why, you know, I think building a team around you of, of other people with other skills is, is good. But, um, I mean, there's been times when I've been really motivated to do that and um, had, you know, decent results. It's changed a lot 
you know, really quickly in, in recent times. And yeah, I'm a bit, a bit hot and cold with the, with the pu pushing myself on social media and all that thing. So again, having other people to kind of <laughs> to kind of keep you accountable with all that is, is good at times as well. What has been your experience with building a fan base and what have you learned along the way? Well, look, as much as I, I think, you know, social media and things like that, as much as, you know, I, I struggle with it at times, I, I like that you have the direct, um, direct access to your fans and your fans have direct access to you. I like that directness cut out along the middleman. Earning an income within music can be very challenging and often requires a diverse source of income streams. What are some of the streams of income you have relating to your music? My main income from music comes from live, live performance. It kind of always has, um, you know, I get a little bit of money from streams, um, performance royalties, things like that. A bit of merch, I've got a bit of merch, but um, I find mate, those things are really, if you, if you get... Uh, if you even recoup your money, that's probably a good result. So the live thing, as far as making profit, that's my main source of income. Yeah, I'd certainly like to, to change that. I mean, I'd like there to be other residual residual forms of income coming through, through streams or licensing or whatever that is. That's another thing we're kind of working on, I guess. What advice would you give to an artist that's watching or listening to this who is beginning to embark on their own independent musical journey? I think... I think yeah. In the, in the beginning, I think it's important to 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 kind of learn or as many aspects of the whole game as you can. And then I guess it's identifying when that's too much or when you can outsource things and and find people that are better skilled um, or just have, have the passion maybe to do other parts of the, the business, whether that's marketing or the admin side or whatever it is, um, or booking, you know, booking gigs or whatever that is. Um, I've always been pretty hand on with the booking side of it and there's things that I'm good at, other things not so much. So I think it's identifying what you're good and passionate at and doing that and then letting other people handle other things. But it takes a, it takes a time to find the right people for you, the right fit for you. Well, for me, it has taken, um, you know, and it changes, it changes all the time. Every release changes. But look, one of the best bits of advice I got early on was, was just to keep doing what I was doing, you know, like just keep doing it and, and, um, you'll work it out. Um, another really good piece of advice is to kind of work out what you want, work out where you want to go. Um, ask yourself those questions. What do you want? What do you want? Where do you want to go with it? Um, you know, and, and also really honing in, um, on, on who you are as an artist. And I think more and more so being really succinct with that because, you know, I remember what it used to be, you'd write paragraphs or pages of a bio. Now it's like one paragraph. Like what I've been working on lately is, is a, a pitch line, you know, it's literally like a line or two lines that describe where I'm at, <laughs> or what, who I am as an artist. Um, and and that's, I think I came up with, uh, C, uh, Nico makes Sifty, C, uh, no, is it? Nico makes <laughs> Seaside Sifters, uh, road music rinsed in indie ethos. Um, as an outlier, Nico has always felt like an out, something like an outsider, but well, I always strive to make music that stands alone, um, that belongs to everyone. <laughs> See, I'm still working on that, but it's something like that. But anyway, whatever, whatever it is, I think you've got to find, I think, yes, being succinct with your message, which I'm clearly not, but working on that. People's attention spans are really short, mine included. Think, think yourself how you consume media. It's probably... If you're anything like me, your attention span's pretty short. So I think you got to keep that in mind when you're marketing your own um, brand to, to be direct and, and as succinct as possible.